Hi, this is Joan, and I wanted to give you a very brief history lesson. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice always goes whenever I start trying to talk. But anyway, this is the Siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE, and this is from Wikipedia. Okay, the Siege of Jerusalem in the year 70 CE was the decisive event of the First Jewish-Roman War, in which the Roman army captured the city of Jerusalem and destroyed both the city and its temple. The Roman army, led by the future Emperor Titus, with Tiberius Julius Alexander as his second-in-command, besieged and conquered the city of Jerusalem, which had been controlled by Judean rebel factions since 66 CE, following the Jerusalem riots of 66, when the Judean provisional government was formed in Jerusalem. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Okay, the reason why I read that to you was because, you know, you probably have not heard about it in your churches very much, or if at all, and probably not very much, if at all, in your schools. Now, I do believe that these were black people, and that would probably explain why it's not being taught in your schools in particular. But it is important, because if you remember Matthew 24, okay, what I just read was what the Savior was prophesying, at least part of it, in Matthew 24, which reads, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all the nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him who is, which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, nor on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulations, such as what not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sakes, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false cross Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, inasmuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret cham chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. 
immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together the elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other now learn the parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that summer is nigh so likewise ye when ye should see all these things know that it is near even at the doors verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away but of that day and hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for, in th for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark so knew not and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be then shall two be in the field the one shall be taken the other left two women shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken and the other left watch therefore so ye for ye know not what hour your lord doth come but know this that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house be broken up therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his lord hath made rule over his household to give them meat in due season blessed is that servant whom his lord when he cometh shall find so doing verily i say to you then he shall make him ruler of all his goods and as but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth now that was a pretty long passage i hope that you stuck around for it because i think that if you really listen to it it's not just telling you about what happened with the fall of Jerusalem approximately 40 years after the Savior passed. Um, basically, he was using that to tell you about what's going to happen now, what could possibly be happening now. And the reason why I'm saying that is because of the problems that uh, Russia is having with Ukraine. Now, I had been showing you a scripture scriptures in isaiah so but before i go back to isaiah the things that he mentioned before the nation shall rise against the nation and all that these were just the beginning of sorrows and i think that we have just left from the beginning to the middle this is no longer the beginning this is it it's a movie i really like uh, aliens not alien it was okay too but aliens 1986 and there's a time when the aliens are coming and Michael Bain turns around and looks at the rest of the crew and say game and says game time that's what this is game time or like I like to say prayer time though every you know every time is prayer time but I think you know what I mean okay so what it's basically telling you is that once you stop seeing this it's going to be the beginning of sorrows they will deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Okay, now, that didn't really happen during the siege of Jerusalem. What happened then is like the Savior told them, flee to the mountains. A lot of the Christians did. But as I said, this happened. It's estimated that it wasn't fulfilled, what he said, until about 40 years after he had passed. 
So what happened was there was a Passover and everybody came into the city that particular year. And when they came into the city, the army surrounded them. Now, King David, being the great king he was and great planner, had put so much food into the storehouses that they would have been fine if they would have just gotten along with each other. But unfortunately, they did not. Even though they were being crowded in, they were under siege. And because people had come from out of town to go into the city, it was even more crowded than it usually was. Uh, they started fighting each other. There were four different factions, and they were each fighting for their own section of... Well, they were fighting for the whole thing, but each one of them claimed a certain section. And so to fight off one section, another section burned all the food. So that is why these people, these people of the Most High, who were his uh, chosen people wound up resorting to cannibalism and also they were even while they were doing this they were fighting and killing each other does that sound familiar to you that uh, a certain group of people who call themselves god's people when they're locked up together start killing each other well in any case they also resorted to cannibalism so um that is why i take you to Isaiah. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 3, and it reads, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the state and the staff. What is this? The whole state of bread and the whole state of water. Okay, what is that? That is a famine. Okay, and I think that just like a uh, what it was telling you in Matthew, it's telling you uh, tribulation is coming. So, okay, and this is not just a famine for food and water. Anybody who might be able to help you is pretty much gone. And it says, I will give children to be your princes and babes shall rule over them. Okay, what I think that is telling you is immature people are going to rule over you and it'll probably be a society that really worships youth okay and the people shall be oppressed every one by another okay if you live in the hood or maybe you live in a, uh, a slightly better place but either way people are out to get each other everybody's trying to cheat everybody and um your neighbors won't be any help. And like I said, the Savior said, quit having children. Because the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. Now, I just saw this mini series called uh, Inventing Anna. And basically what they are demonstrating or what they're telling you is good is narcissistic behavior. Uh, someone who has audacity. Someone who... In her particular case, she had no money, but she almost succeeded in getting uh, really well-educated bankers to finance her buying a New York building. That's audacity, and I'm not saying the particular audacity is bad, but it is a trait of narcissists to not only to cheat and to steal, but to be fearless while they're doing it. And that is what they are basically telling people is a good thing to do. So you see the base against the honorable. And also no one will want to take any kind of responsibility within the community. That is a man should take hold of his brother. And uh, for instance, I saw this film where they were showing what would happen in the event of a plague. And it was a man who was a paramedic. And he went to the hospital. He snuck into the hospital to get some medication. And when he snuck back out, some people saw him. And they were asking him, are you a medical professional? Can you help me? And his answer was, no, no, I can't. 
and i couldn't understand at first why he would deny that but the answer is because he had to get back to his own family and they would have probably kidnapped him or something so i think that that is what this is telling you right here that um nobody's going to want to or even be in a position to they're not gonna be in a position really to assist each other not that that was big on these people's list of things to do anyway so if you keep reading you're going to get into where these hebrew, hebrew israelite men like to say that they're talking about the daughters of zion are haughty and that they're saying that it is the women and i think the fact that they say zion i really think it's talking about the preachers and the reason i say that is because of the last this is chapter three the other two chapters are where the heavenly father uh, through isaiah uh, says that the nation is just full of fatherless children and baby mamas basically and um uh, that he wanted his people to look out for these people and they didn't do it so if that's the case it wouldn't make sense for him to come back here and then to say well you know i, I don't really care for these women these you know daughters of israel so i don't think that's who he's referring to that think that he's saying something right here that these israelites will never look at okay and this is still chapter three and this is verse 8 and 9. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Remember I told you these preachers, these male preachers, it's okay to listen to some of them, but when they start talking about women, I think that they're going against what the Heavenly Father said and what the what his son actually did. It says, the show of their continence doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Okay, have how many trans uh, dressing black men have you seen on TV or on whatever it is you're looking at? Are they hiding it? Nope. Um, they they just aren't. And I think that you know, the heavenly Father created things in the order that he wanted them and it's not for us to change and when we attempt to uh, not only do we have some problems in the physical but in the spiritual which will become the physical we have angered the most high not we because i'm not doing it but uh, people have angered him and you know eventually he's very patient but eventually you know you're going to pay for that unless you repent but you know i'm not picking on any particular section of people everybody is doing something that they need to quit doing that's why repentance is necessary you know anyway let's keep going okay i think you might want to examine something called the noahide noahide laws and uh these laws are were made by uh people stating that they were the sons of noah and basically everybody is a son or a daughter of noah but anyway under the talmud's Noahide laws the worship of jesus is forbidden under penalty of i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say that on youtube but you can see it here since such worship of christ is condemned as idolatry so um you can look this up and it's this was just the quickest one i could come to but it's all kinds of information about this particular thing this particular law and you should also know this law was passed uh was accepted or passed or something by i believe bush and then by donald trump but again uh you can look that up the reason why it is important is this okay now this is still chapter three this is 24 i just wanted to read 24 to connect it to the um uh, to the verses about the daughters of zion but what i really want you to pay attention to is 25 and 26 and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well said hair baldness and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty thy men shall fall by the sword 
and thy mighty in the war and her gates shall lament and mourn and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground k twenty five thy men shall fall by the sword so i think they're saying men here is connecting this to what he's calling the daughters of zion i really do think he's talking about these men and another thing that they're talking about is war now it's telling you that this war will not be won by Jerusalem or uh, Zion or by God's people. It's telling you the men are going to fall by the sword, the mighty men in the war. So again, just like they were doing with the siege of Jerusalem, maybe they're fighting each other. They're falling by the sword and they're mighty. How are they falling in the war? Okay, you do know what's happening with the Ukraine could possibly lead to a world war. And as I said in the last video, that something could happen to African Americans, descendants of Judah, or whatever it is you want to call black people at this point. Uh, something could happen so that the nation is really hurt but they the nation was not the specific target and as i said before if you really read the first chapters in isaiah it's telling you about a nation israel within a larger nation so it's telling you here specifically about israel and that the men shall fall by the sword and the mighty in the war and what's going to happen to israel her gate shall lament and mourn, and being desolate, she shall sit upon the ground. Like I said, the black race, the black nation, is it's already gone. Black women, if you're trying to hold on to, you know, you want to have little black kids, uh, it's too late. Save that for what comes next. Right now, concentrate on saving yourself. when you go on to chapter 4 the first verse chapter 1 is the one that a lot of men use to say that uh, polygamy is correct but I don't think that that's what it's saying here also and it reads and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach Hey, that does not sound like some happy women here. Like they're like, oh man, I just really want to be wife number seven. No, it sounds like there's some sort of persecution happening to them. And if they don't put themselves, align themselves with some sort of a man, they're going to have a problem. And to me, that sounds like, okay, now, if there is a world war, it would be, I think... Um, it would be Russia, China, and Iran. So, in Iran, do they practice polygamy? And are there women such that they have to, or at least it's a pretty good idea to attach yourself to a man? I kind of think, eh, possibly. It goes on to say, and that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them who are these people who are living large, the ones that escaped. Okay? This is not talking about the people who escaped. This is talking about the people who are left. Okay? Or at least they are not the branch of the Lord. Okay? The branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them who that are escaped of Israel. So some of Israel will manage to get out. And it's telling you here, further on, and it shall come to pass, that he that is left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem, shall be called holy, every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. I think when they're speaking about Jerusalem here, what they're saying is anywhere that uh, God's people are is like a kind of Jerusalem. Uh, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst 
thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning burning that's persecution people are going to be left in i believe in america black people and uh it's not going to be good and the lord shall will create upon every dwelling place of mount zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the day time from the heat and a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain okay i think again that's speaking about the ones who are leaving who managed to be the escaped of israel now that ties in with what the savior was saying back in matthew starting with verse nine then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill, kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then many and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another okay why would you be delivered up to be afflicted why would there be a particular nation well because what did he say this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations so this has something to do with a particular nation and then shall the end come what could happen so that people who are part of a nation and are preaching the gospel would be persecuted? Again, let's look at, you know, the Nahat laws. If they are preaching the gospel, then they are saying Jesus is Lord, or I believe his name was Yeshua, Yeshua. They didn't include the vows and words, so... It could be either one, but in any case, if you proclaim that he is the king of kings, it's not going to go too well. That could possibly lead to um, some problems, to the persecution that both Isaiah and the Savior are speaking of. So, I'm just basically saying, look to the news, and also this scripture that I always think about. Okay, uh, this is Luke 2120, and it reads, By your patient endurance you will gain your souls, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you will know that her desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out. Let those in the country stay out of the city. Now, I believe in heeding warnings, like I said, and that sounds pretty point blank, and in america it has never really in north america occurred to people that something could happen here but if you look at the movie red dawn it kind of told you yeah it could and uh, i do believe that these movies have predictive programming not because they want to they really don't want to the devil doesn't want to tell you what he's gonna do he wants to just walk up and do it but i believe it is a law that he has to warn you he is tricky. He doesn't warn you in a way that you take it seriously. But I do think that, that that this is something to consider. Now this is back to Matthew 24. And 15 reads, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them who which be in Judea flee into the mountains. I'm not sure anybody really knows what this abomination of desolation is. I at one time thought it was this. Okay, I at first thought it was this particular event. And, you know, I'm not ruling it out. I'm just saying I'm not really sure. And I'm not the type who's going to come on and tell you, well, I know everything because I most definitely do not. And if you have any idea, please let me know. I'm happy to hear it. But uh, let us continue. Okay, so this is back to Matthew. 24 and starting at 16 it says then let them which be in judea flee into the mountains let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days 
but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days be shortened there should be no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened so this is kind of what i have been trying to piece together and now with this possible war coming it it's kind of like another possible piece of the puzzle and like i said i believe in heeding warnings you know the father says get out of the city i think well get out of the city it's a question of like and go where but maybe it's kind of like a i was again i was talking to the same friend and i was saying that sometimes you don't even need to know where if it just says go just go just pick a direction go there so i don't know i think in this case you might want to be more specific and you know i also think that this is a time when women if you're by yourself you, that might not be such a bad thing because it makes a point of telling you woe unto them that are with child so when i say this is not the time to have children i'm not being a hater i love children i did not admittedly i did not like being a wife at all but i loved being a mother I, I really did and i think that if i had been with a different man i might have liked being a wife but i definitely liked being a mother so it's not that i'm trying to be a hater is that it'll be hard enough taking care of yourself and running especially since as a uh, black men really don't like black women you aren't going to find any help there or not much help or maybe you will it depends upon the heavenly father i mean if he wants you to survive you're going to survive regardless of what are the odds so uh let me know what you think about all these things coming together and let me know if you have any ideals on where you want to go or if you think the time is right to go now or what it is you think uh this was what i was writing about when uh in the book about isaiah that it's telling you that at some point the there might be a problem with this country and since we are in this country there's a problem here too so um Please take a look at my book if you get an opportunity. I would much appreciate it. And my author's page is Amazon.com forward slash author forward slash John Jones books. And I will put it in the description. So you guys, if you have other people you can fellowship with and trust this is the time to possibly start making some plans and uh, i showed you the site where you can buy land for without having a um without having to go to a bank so let me know what you're up to because i want to be up to it too <laughs> you guys have a great rest of your day